ever tried to solve one of these things? Some people will tell you puzzles are interesting as a challenge to our brain power or as a test of one's patience. I'm inclined to believe that they fascinate most of us for another reason. How they work is somebody else's secret. Here is another kind of puzzle. This one has people in it. And these people, they have secrets about a project they call Scoundrel. Let's have a closer look at them. Frank Farrell, engineer works for an AEC laboratory that specializes in weapon systems. Probably then, Scoundrel is a nuclear weapon. Bill Cannon, he's one of the classification officers at Frank Farrell's installation, and a very capable man, I might add. Harry Duffield, he works in procurement at the same installation. As for myself, let's put it this way. If it weren't for people like me, this whole classification business would be unnecessary. Now, I didn't say I was a... There goes that nasty word, spy. Let's just say I am a member of the international intelligence community. But let's get down to business. Classification business. There's one thing about classifications that everybody knows, no matter which side of the fence he is on. It only has temporary value. It's like this puzzle. If you work at a secret long enough and hard enough, you'll find out what it is. In this field of classification, we have a saying that is unfortunately true. With classification, we buy time. But that margin of time, whether it's in terms of months or years, can be terribly important. Let me tell you, as an engineer, I'm all for classification. To my way of thinking, classification covers a wide area, and I'm willing to go along with whatever the experts decide. Besides, we've got these detailed guides. There shouldn't be any problems. But I will say this, though, that we have to watch out for the tendency of some people to make a big deal out of these administrative decisions. It gets complicated. We know that classification is compromised many times by people who are loyal, trustworthy, otherwise responsible. How does it happen? One major factor. We live in an open society. It's a matter of pride with us Americans. We encourage publication. We know that research, production, invention, all get a tremendous boost from competition. As a people, we don't believe in secrets. Yet we find ourselves seriously concerned with classification for the sake of national security. In the instances where people violate classification, there are frequently certain common factors, deadline pressures, impatience, everyday misunderstandings. Oh, and there's Another very common failing, overestimating our ability to judge on classification and underestimating other people's ability to find us out. Hi, oh, honey. Is Harry there? It's Frank. Yeah. Hi there, old buddy boy. How are you? 
You know that order we sent through yesterday? Yeah. 3092. That's the one. Look here. We're in, a, we're in a great sweat to get that stuff. Oh, no, there's no need to go through all that routine. I, I no doubt that Bill Cannon told you that, but look here, he's not talking about the same thing I am. Look, buddy, relax a minute. You got your guide handy? Okay, turn to page 23, item 273. Now, that doesn't say anything about... Well, what's compromising about a few castings? Beryllium, that's right, you work in procurement, you know how much that stuff goes through every day. Well, who's going to... Are you willing to tell that to the director? That you want to hold up this project just for the sake of some damn bureaucratic rule? You know what I think? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand all that. I still say it's against the regulations, Frank. Now, you know that as well as I do. Listen, you... Frank! So, all, all right already, I'll process it. So, goodbye. Big shot. <laughs> Quantity four. Item castings, beryllium. Outer diameter eight inches. Wall thickness tolerance one ten thousand. Routine purchase. Purpose unknown. But fragments like this are part of a puzzle. If you collect enough bits of information, they begin to add up. That's one thing Frank Farrell doesn't seem to realize. How much sheer detail is available about his business? All one needs is the interest and the time. Here's a good source. A set of telephone directories for various AEC laboratories. Testimony before various committees of Congress going back several years. Trade journals, scholarly journals, patents, the Commerce Daily, corporation brochures and reports, even in-house newsletters. <laughs> and remember, all of this is public, available, handed over on a silver platter. With this information, plus um, whatever special investigation one can accomplish, a small item could mean a great deal. Frank Farrell will probably continue to cut corners in procurement. But as Frank would say, who is to notice? <laughs> we have positive evidence of the efforts other powers are making to learn about nuclear energy work in the United States. Naturally, Special attention is devoted to getting information on procurement. Where could you get a better insight into work currently in progress? Project managers and engineers have long been accustomed to using systems like PERC to plan and sort out production schedules. Classification should be just as much a part of the planning process as any of the other factors in a PERT schedule. If you don't allow enough time to arrange for cleared vendors on sensitive items, your future will be dark with problems. For example. But we keep getting back to the same basic obstacle. There's no other company that can forge a piece like this. It's a very special job. I still can't understand why we didn't know about this months ago when we consulted about classified procurement for scoundrel. But the configuration of the weapon is entirely different now. They've substituted an entire new internal design on us. Why didn't you keep us up to date? I 
as you can see, the engineer, the classification man, the installation and the AEC are all collectively in a bind. They can't meet the deadline for testing scoundrel without that forging. And because of poor planning, they can't get the forging without sacrificing classification. The problem had to be taken to higher levels because you don't sacrifice classification lightly. And then after all the discussions and the consultations and the meetings, they had to come to a decision. The forging was purchased on the open market. And this procurement data became known to many people. From Bill Cannon's point of view, too many people. Let's see. Forging assembly magnesium. Length, 14 inches. to be fabricated in two parts per attached illustration. When people work with classified materials day after day, they tend to lose some degree of awareness of classification. And when the work you do is connected so closely with your professional interests, with your competence, it becomes difficult to keep classification in mind. Ideas, especially good ideas, are born of an insight that's very personal. But where a weapons design and manufacturer are concerned, there are no private concepts. From the very genesis of an idea, through all of its variations and evolutions, it's automatically classified. It was born classified. And if during the process of development in the officer shop, this fact gets to be forgotten, the situation is ready made for trouble. Procurement, that field. Oh, hiya, Frank. Yeah, yeah, I remember, sure. Just a sec. Ah, here it is. Scoundrel 3757. Set of five purchase orders. No classification markings on them. The drawing. Oh, yeah, here it is. Well, we only kept a copy. Well, it was four bidders on that job, you know. We sent a copy of the drawing to each of the four bidders. You didn't want that, huh? Well, your office sent her over here with the rest of the paperwork. So what are you worrying about? Let's add up the score. We have information on the beryllium casting, the specialized forging, and the radar windows. We know what Engineer Farrell's job is, and we know the specialties of these vendors and other public information. So we can deduce the details of size, weight, and the radar frequency of this weapon. I would conclude right now that Scoundrel is a new and smaller nuclear re-entry vehicle with a yield of about uh, 100 kilotons. Yes. I think that would be a fairly safe assumption. What do you think? 